Hello, this is saxophonist Antonio Parker, and this is a conversation in jazz, where we are promoting jazz and telling the stories. Today we are presenting part two of our interview with trombonist, composer, and arranger, Mr. Greg Boyer. We ask you to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so we can let you know when we are posting another video or going live. We also ask you to donate to our Cash App in order to support the channel and help us to produce future videos. Our Cash App is dollar sign Jazzology 101. That's dollar sign Jazzology 101. Thank you. Enjoy the video. Okay, we're back. We're talking yes, we are. <laughs> to the one and only Mr. Greg Boyer. So, Greg, uh, you know, we were just talking about uh, some of your experiences with P-Funk. Mm -hmm. Did you ever record um, with P-Funk? Yeah. How many recordings have you done? Um, if let you me see. With, with P-Funk in there, various offshoots. Okay. The first session we did was with Parlette. Okay. Um, female singing group. Okay. And... I think the first, I can't remember which the first song was, but I remember the first album okay. was Parlette's Invasion of the Booty Snatcher. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> okay. I mean, you know, we did the uh, did the arrangements and all that, got a solo on the record. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Man. It, it's funny because when I first got with P-Funk, I didn't have a horn. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a trombone. I had a tuba. So wow, I use Michael Barber, uh -huh. the guy I grew up with. You know, he's from Pisgah, Maryland. Uh -huh. I'm from Bryan's Road, and and I borrowed his horn. So and you get it, your it, the, the welding was I had a handkerchief tied around it to hold it together. <laughs> wow. And then you know after the end of the tour, I went out and bought a King Silver Two B. I think is that the horn I remember. Mm, probably not, man. Okay. I ain't had that very long. Okay. But that horn was like... You used to have a silver horn. I, I, I could go up on that thing. I, I always like silver horns. Yeah, yeah. But now you got one with a black horn, right? Like, yeah, it's yeah. carbon fiber. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. More than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, I was just like, man, them G's and, and A's are popping out of this horn, man, like yeah. Pez. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's funny. And... As I've gotten different horns since then, I kept the same range. Okay. So, yeah. You know, so, so how many it, albums did you do? Oh. I did. Um, let me see. Two Parlet albums, uh, Parliament album, uh, P Funk All Stars. Now the funny thing is, you know, with the linear notes and the credits and everything, they had us on albums that we ain't play on. Oh, I got so, you. I got you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I got you. But off the top of my head, let me see those four, and then I played, um, I think, five or six. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. So, and what, why'd you, did every good thing comes to an end? Mm -hmm. Why'd you decide to, did you leave? The, were you fired? Or did, no, I <laughs> or left. Oh, you left? I left, yeah. Why'd you leave? Um, there was a whole lot of reasons, man, but basically, man, they, I, I just got sick of it. Okay. You know, it, there just wasn't enough emphasis anymore to sound, I won't say sound good, but sound your best. Okay. And you just like mailing performances in, mm -hmm. same old stuff, man. I say, hey, let's do something different. No. Are they still performing? Yeah. Really? Well, up until, you know, the pandemic, yeah, yeah they yeah, were still yeah. performing. Uh, yeah, okay. But I, I just... Gutara. And, and then, you know, they weren't, you know, doing their money. It was, you know, up and down. And, gotcha. yeah. you know, I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger uh, today. Yeah. You know? yeah, I got you. I got you. I like, I got but you. I don't eat hamburgers. Yeah. So. I got you. No, I got you. Yeah. And I, I just. So, what year was that when you left? 96. Okay. December 3rd, 1996. Oh, wow. Did you. And did you say, well, this is going to be my last gig or something like that? Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Because. That was the thing that they still owe me money. Uh huh. So I was like, I'm not coming back until you pay me. 
Okay. And as soon as I got the money, then I officially quit. <laughs> <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> hey, yeah, they, hey, yeah. You, you was playing chess. <laughs> yeah. But that's cool. So uh, you also, now we're going to talk about a couple of other musical institutions that you've played with. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with the the, 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 the uh, Godfather, yeah. Mr. Chuck Brown. Now, you played with Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers? Um... Did you play with that when he was the, with the, uh, uh, the Soul Searchers? Well, some of those guys were still there. Okay. Now, there was there was some overlap in there because okay. I would go out on the road with P-Funk, and then I would come home and play with Chuck. Oh, really? Where'd you meet Chuck? It was right after I moved back from L.A., Okay. Was, which was in uh, 88. Okay. And I was playing with Little Benny and the Masters. Okay, little Benny. Little Benny, yeah. yes, I was, yes, man. We were in the same bill together, and Chuck yeah. was like, and I, here's the thing, because it was P Funk Horns playing with little Benny. So me, Benny, and Greg. We wow. would do stuff as a session. We just go oh, wow. And, yeah. That's, yeah, that's what's up. And Chuck heard us, and man, he said, man, y'all sound really good. Uh -huh. And he said, I'm the only one in town that's qualified to pay you. I said, Boy, he talk a good game. <laughs> so I'm like, I wanted to see about it. Yeah. <laughs> and he was right. Wow. Yes, sir. <laughs> and, and, and so I started playing with Chuck in 89. Wow. And I've been playing in that band to some degree since then. Yeah. Yeah. And so what, what's the difference between Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers and then when he was just Chuck Brown? Is the music the same? Or was, it, was it a little different? How that? Well, the music was... For pretty much the same, mm -hmm. cause you know once you have all of them hits, you got to keep playing them. Yeah, you got to no play Bust and Loose. Yeah, yeah. you got to play Go Go Swing. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to play. Uh, we need money. Mm -hmm. You got to play all of mm -hmm. those. But mm -hmm. it, more than anything, it was a personnel change. Okay. Now, uh, with the personnel change, you know, meant that there was a, a certain aspects of the, the flavor of the whole thing. I mean, it was still. DC pocket as we yeah. know it. You know, and Chuck started adding some jazz elements to his go-go. Yeah. Like it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And But that's been his thing. You know, all them go-go bands have an element. Okay. Like uh, Chuck's thing was jazz. If you listen to EU, mm -hmm. you know, their thing was they were more, you know, rock oriented. And, okay. And, and, and all them go-go bands had their own personality. Chuck's was the, the, the jazz and blues thing. Yeah, yeah. Man, I mean, I'm, I came up on busting loose, man. Yeah, you know, and, and he was probably more than anybody insisted on having a horn section. Okay. Now, how'd you start writing horn parts for the baby? Did he know you write or arrange? Um, yeah, he knew. But you know, the thing about making a record with Chuck mm -hmm. is he wants the stuff very simple. Gotcha. And what you do on stage, yeah, is, is different. But on the records, man, he wants. Yeah. He would say he would say stuff like. You know, if, you, if the harmonies were too thick, he says, no, nah, you can't be playing all that stuff, man. You take food out of my baby's mouth. <laughs> so he he liked it simplistic. Yeah. But he still wanted to have that. Yeah, yeah. So. Man, I'm going to tell you my yeah. Chuck Brown story. How I got the band, I, you know. Yeah. So uh, I had wrote this song. I wrote, I, I called myself being a producer at the time. I had this thing called the Handball. Built on the handle, handle. I kind of wrote the I song. I played on that. Yeah, that's right. You yeah. played on that. <laughs> so I just, I called myself hearing in my head Chuck doing something with it, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I mentally gave it to him. He liked it, but I don't, I don't think it went directly. It was kind of faster than the go go vibe, but okay. he did, he did like it. Anyway, um, I was living in D.C. up that time about twenty years or something, man. Yeah, you were and, there for a minute. Yeah, but I've never, I never checked out Go Go. And I was a straight up jazz, you know, funk, all yeah. that, but like so, and then I'm like, man, how do I get to talk to this cat? <laughs> I, you know, you know, you know, because I'm hearing this, I like the quality of his voice. Yeah. And I was hearing it on this, because he's he's a southern kind of cat, too. And so I was he's hearing Carolina. That, yeah, yeah, I was hearing that on this on this track. And so at the time, I had this Friday night uh gig. At uh, HR 57. Mm -hmm. And so y'all was playing at Mirrors on uh, New York Avenue. Okay. And I said, well, I said, well, I'm going to be in D.C. all this time and not 
at least go say that I saw Chuck Brown. Right. You know, because he was getting up and I said, at least what so I went after the after our gig, I think y'all gig started at one. Or twelve, it was well, really. See, that was the thing about playing them go-go gigs. Yeah, it, it was the best gig in town, and let me explain why. Uh -huh. One, it, it it was all cash under the table, uh -huh. which yeah. I like. You yeah. know, yeah, you, yeah. You, from bookkeeper yeah. standpoint, and one a, it was good cash under the yes, table. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and two. You got the stick and you know stick and move. You put yeah. your jazz input in, yeah. uh -huh. and then stand back group. Yeah. And then yeah. you put a little bit of jazz in. Yeah. And three, those gigs were always late enough that you could do anything that night and still and be then, on time for yeah, the go go yeah, gig. Yeah, exactly. Because they started so late. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I said I found a job playing at Mirrors. Yeah. And I said, well, I'm gonna go. I just wanted to see him. Yeah. You know. And when I so I, after HR 57, I I went to Mirrors just to hear the band. Yeah. And here I see all people I know, you, Ryan Mills, Cherie, yeah. you know, and you know, I'm you know, and I'm like, and I see Chuck and I'm like, wow. I'm just like That's what Chuck realized. He's like, if you're gonna have good musicians in your band, uh, expect for them to leave at some point and then come back. Yeah. Because if they're that good, then they too good to stay here. Yeah. In DC. Yeah. Yeah. So a week after that, Brian Mills called me. I told uh, man, I, I need uh, I need a sub for Chuck because I think Brian was the, either, either developing his his uh, a, exact secret society secret society yeah. whatever. So he would call me to sub. Have you heard of them? Have you seen them? Yeah, <sighs> heck yeah, man. None but they tight. Yeah, it's that's a well oiled machine. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> and and, <laughs> and the doubt. thing is, they do pocket, they do eighty nineties hip hop. Yeah. The R and B is a seamless transition from yeah, one to the other, beautiful. and each arrangement is just like massive. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Every time, every time I see the man, I feel like I got beat up. <laughs> <laughs> I be in, going home, man, checking for bruises, <laughs> seeing my eye ain't closed, yeah. and my jaw is in the right place. Man, they hit hard. Yeah, they man, they hit real hard. Yeah. So, uh, so Brian used to call me to sub, and I, I'm nervous. I'm like. You know, because I got to learn all this music. So, you know, I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> you right now, Sean. Yeah, right now, you're a wise thing. <laughs> <laughs> I said, man, y'all remember? Y'all step up. Uh, Don't step. <laughs> I'm like, God. But, man, I'm going to tell you. What? I mean, when I, when I did that first gig, man, I was just blown away by the power of Go Go and how the, the audience interplay with the. Mm -hmm. With the band and, and man, it was like it reminded me when I I was in uh in 1996 95 96 I was in uh did an African tour okay. and I got to sit in with uh, Fela Kuti. Oh shoot! And bro, the audience it was just some spiritual stuff. Yeah, it was like you know, I mean, it was just the the band and the audience that connect. That's what Gogo -Go reminded me of. It, it was real African. Oh, yeah. It was real earthy and like real rooty, and man, that I was it was intimidating. I say, wow. Then they, somebody asked me to describe that, and I forgot. I said it's African. It's a combination of, of of African music, Pentecostal funk, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and with a little bit of jazz thrown in. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so all those gigs with Chuck was stressful for me because I'm trying, you know, because. My mind just doesn't memorize music. Like, I got, for me, to memorize stuff, man, it's, I guess I got a lazy memory, but, and y'all was doing the steps, and, and I've been, <laughs> then they, they're like, stop, and everybody looking at the watch. Yeah. Man, I, and man, but. But, you know, all of that stuff evolved over time. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. It, it, it was, was nothing was instant about any of okay, that. Okay, yeah, I, I jumped in there with the sharks. No, that, that, um. That sine wave I was telling yeah, you about, yeah. was that ever done of that? Yes, sir. Yes, the, sir. The power of the groove, man. No doubt, man. And that really, I say, wow. And man, that that's, and I just, man, I said, wow, I've been missing this all this time, man. You know, mm -hmm. um, so, and man, yeah. But go see some of the other bands, man. Okay. Go check out Essence. Okay. You know, go check out Backyard. Go check out Junkyard, man. Go see all of them, man. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I say those three, mm -hmm. they're like the elder statesmen of the, of the music. Okay. The, the the young boys, the up and comers, they're going to be here a minute, but go check them out. Okay. You know, why yeah. they still you gotcha, know, gotcha. doing what they're yeah. doing. 
Yeah, man, and and yes, yeah, so definitely gonna check that out, man. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, that go go something, man. And Chuck was so cool, man. That's it was just he, he was so cool. I got to go to Japan. Okay. Uh, with Chuck, we, yeah. we did with Lil Benny. Yeah. And so I got to, so I got a little bit. I got a little bit. Of, you know, yeah. being a jazz cat. You know, I got you know, and I'm I, I'm honored to say I've had a, you know, uh, some been able to play with a icon and, like and Chuck. That's the thing, man. You know, some of these people. You know, you do the gig and everything. You make sure everything is right. You got all your music yeah, yeah. and make sure everything. But then you step away from it. And it's like, what did I just do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, man. So it's like, wow. And that's when I when I talk about legacy. When I and you look back and say, man, I did that. And mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 like you don't you can't plan that. No. You know, something. That's why I say in music, you just follow the thing and it leads you here, it leads you there. I mean, it's like. Wow, and so uh, yeah, man. So I was, I'm, and you, and you were, and we're gonna talk about that later. You have a, you have a leadership quality that <laughs> that is, and and like like, you know, that's but that's, in, that's really, in any instance, if you're gonna follow somebody, let it be somebody that's been there and done that. Exactly. Yeah. And people respect the horn player, and they respect your leadership, and that's another thing that I I pay attention to all that. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. So it's it's, it's uh it's uh and we're gonna talk about leadership at the end. I'm gonna ask you about leadership. But yeah, you've you've had that big brother, you know, you but you already know what you know what you're doing. <laughs> and then you wrote a lot of those uh parts you, you did you did you arrange a lot of those parts with Chuck? Mm. Chuck Baby and all that? Or No, uh a lot of his songs. Yeah. He might have come up with the horn lines. Okay. But I might have put the put the, uh, the hot sauce on it. Yeah, with the yeah. hot sauce. The, I'm sorry, I mumble put the vinegar sauce. on it. You put the mumble sauce on it. <laughs> <laughs> the mumble sauce. The mumble sauce. Yeah. So you know, I asked my I asked my wife too. I said, like, "How long has that been around?" Because I've only been hearing about mumble sauce maybe like in the past ten years. Wow. But this goes way back to when she was little. and She was going to the corner carry out. So I I didn't realize the 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 the, the mumble sauce was that. Entrenched in the yeah. in the fabric of the city, Mambo sauce is just uh, as much a part of DC as Go Go. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Shoot, yeah, man. So um, you also how many? You, I know you recorded with Chuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you on a few albums. Yeah, right? I'm on a few of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. You so videos. Yeah, Did videos. Video, yeah, man. And, and that's the thing about not just Chuck but Go Go. Period. It's like you don't really get it. Get it. Unless you go see it live, yeah, yeah, you don't. You hear it on record, but you don't feel the power of yeah, the, the electrical the, uh, cycle yeah, yeah. that is band, audience, band, yeah. audience, band, yeah. audience, and yes. you know the call and response. Yeah, man, it's, and, and, and that pocket just sounds so much different when you're there. Yeah, and it, it's real. It's really tribal in a way. It, it, extremely. <laughs> It's like, man, but yeah, it's like tribe and church. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, yeah. Uh, so how'd you feel when uh, Chuck passed? How, how did that hit you? You know what, man? Nobody's gonna be here forever. Yeah. But that didn't make it any better. Yeah. It didn't. You yeah. know, you just felt like yeah, you your connection, that. your physical connection to something super significant was gone. Yeah, no doubt. And 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 but you're carrying on. Y'all have the Chuck Brown band. Yeah. So y'all yeah. carrying on the tradition. So the horn section is you, uh, uh, Brad, me, Clint, Brad, and Elijah. Elijah, Bob. Yeah. yeah. So y'all keeping y'all keeping. Oh keep, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's beautiful. How's that going? It's well, especially now, man. It's yeah. it, it's not a lot. I mean, we still yeah. manage to do some festivals yeah. here and there. Y'all y'all just did the DC Jazz Festival. Didn't yes, you? we did. Yeah. The it, the the uh, the, the uh, what they call this the, the pandemic version, no, not the whatever this version of when when uh, it is some, this pandemic. some pandemic related yeah. version of it. What's yeah, because we recorded virtual. It. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say pandemic version. The virtual version. Well, you know, it's all virtual as yeah. a result of the yeah, pandemic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we recorded that a couple of weeks before it was actually aired. Okay. Wow. And, and, and that's a lot of what's happening now, man. Is rec recording things, you know, off to the this, you know, mm -hmm. virtual or whatever, and, and 
and, and doing our best with that and then airing it later. Okay. You yeah, know, man. just so it has, you know, some resemblance of continuity. Wow. So uh, the next institution we're going to talk about is Maceo. Maceo Parker. <laughs> My namesake. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of alto players with last name Parker. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now, I quit playing with P-Funk in 96, and I was gigging around town. Uh-huh. You know, I was even working construction. Was that the time you was with the that when you were coming playing yeah, with that? Yeah, I was coming here playing with yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And Maceo came to town. No, no, this is what happened. Uh, Fishbone asked me that I want to join the band. They said they need a trombone player and a keyboard player. Uh-huh. And I was like, and they shot me a figure, and I'm like, shoot. I said, the way I'm hustling, I'm, make, I'm making that right here at home. You uh-huh. know, why should I go travel to do that mm-hmm. when I could do the same thing here mathematically mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and, and eat the same food every night? Yeah. So I, I passed on it, but they said, well, look, you know, we still like you to come through and just, you know, check us out. We're going to be down to buy you, mm-hmm. you know. Rest in peace, you know, as far as the club is concerned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were opening for Maceo. Okay. Now, I know Maceo for years. You know, we go way back. You knew him prior to that? Yeah, because, you know, he, we, he was part of P-Funk. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. He was, um, like. So he went from James Brown to P-Funk? Yeah. Okay. And, and then, you know, he's the Horny Horns, that's Fred, Maceo, yeah. and Cush and Rick. They uh-huh. were all playing with Bootsy, but then. Okay. For whatever reason, Maceo was like off. So he would be like a guest soloist with P Funk. Okay. Then he was like MD for a minute. Uh-huh. So I knew Maceo from like 1979. Really? Yeah. We go way, way back. So. You knew him personally? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, in a band together. Yeah, yeah. So go down there and sit in with Fishbone. Uh-huh. And I'm playing, you know, doing a da, 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 and that's all fun. Uh-huh. And then Maceo comes on. I'm I'm down there, so I'm saying hi to everybody. And Maceo say, man, you want to sit in on a song? I said, cool. Uh-huh. So go on in, sit in, play with, you know, Mason and do the solo in one section. And he says, hey, man, you know, if uh, I need a trombone player or something, would you be interested? I said, yeah, sure. Uh-huh. So he asked me to do a couple of weeks in Europe Okay. after that. And then... He asked me to do a couple of weeks in September. Okay. But when I did the couple of weeks in September, it turned into a tour. <laughs> it turned into a gig. <laughs> and I have been playing with Macy <laughs> since then, and that was in 98. So did you did you take the place of Fred Wesley? No, Fred was already gone by then. Okay. At that time, it was just uh, Maceo and Ron Tooley. Uh-huh. And if you know anything about Ron Tooley, he played with, um, God, what band was that? Thad, Thad Mill. Mm-hmm. Played with um, Jocko when he lived in Florida. Then he was playing in the Cats Orchestra. Wow. Um, up in New York. You know? mm-hmm. So he was, you know, union guy. Yeah. With a nice track. And he played with Maynard. I forgot. He played with Maynard Ferguson. Oh, wow. Yeah. So yeah. Tooley was playing. With Maceo, so when I got in the band, that was a th- it was the three of us: Maceo, Tooley, and myself. Now, so uh, Fred had been gone; he was always doing his own thing by then. So so far, you got three three bands: mm-hmm. P Funk, Go Go with uh, Chuck, yeah, and now you with Maceo. Yeah, talking about that current that was was the same. Was it like that on all of them? Or were they different? Were they similar? How they, they they were similar. Now, with Maceo, the, the respectful groove was still there, obviously. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. But his thing was much more polished up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's suit and tie. You yeah, know, uh-huh. you, you bring your Gucci game to the Maceo set. Yeah. And it's funny, because we were, it was like the first rehearsal I had with Maceo, right? Uh-huh. Now, when I was a P Funk, I would do this thing. They would give me the solo. Go for like five minutes. I just wailing. Uh huh. And then George would come out and say, "Great boy, you're a great boy." And I would take George and lift him up with one arm <laughs> <laughs> and just hold him in the air. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I'd put him down. I walk Get off the out stage, of here. right? <laughs> so we rehearsal and Maceo. Does, he is. 
burning. I forgot yeah. what song it was, yeah, man, but I was like, I, I lost control. And I went over there and big Macy on play. Get out of here. <laughs> and Macy's like, hey, <laughs> you got to put me down. Yeah. <laughs> Said, you can't do that yeah, to me. I'm yeah. a franchise. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's funny. Uh, so I'm like, wait a minute. There's a certain amount of... And, and Mace tells me after the fact, he said he liked the way I played, but he didn't think that I would fit because I came from P-Funk, all that wildness and everything. Uh -huh. And when I did that, he was like, uh, <laughs> see, I might have been right. <laughs> But it, it, it didn't take me long to go <laughs> yeah, and, and realize, okay, I'm in a different environment now. You know, <laughs> I need to be a little bit more chill about yeah, my thing. I got you. So, yeah, so we're playing with Maceo, man. It was like, it was very reminiscent of maybe Lincoln Center Winton and stuff in the okay. respect. Okay, very conservative. Yeah, conservative looking. Yeah. But, the, but that groove the was, stank, was, that was stank, like that. Yeah, he put that stake on it, baby. It was like blowtorch <laughs> fire, yeah, man. Oh, <laughs> the syncopation is uh, and all that, man. I was oh god, because it was a combination of a lot of things. It was a jazz element about yeah. it. Uh -huh. But Maceo from Carolina, yeah, so there's that, a whole lot of grease. root in that. Yeah, and that you know, he bringing a little bit of James Brown, a little bit of P funk yeah, to yeah. the game, and, and just making this yeah. this cocktail, this sangria. Yeah. And, <laughs> Yeah, man, that's... <laughs> and he was off and running. And it was probably, I would say, at that time, the last of one of few very funk bands still on this planet. Mm. Not people that play funk, but people that are funk. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, what did y'all rehearse? What, how, would y'all rehearse? How long would be rehearsals? Would y'all have, like, uh, uh, long rehearsals and that no, type of thing? No, no. No. You know, playing with Macy was like like playing with um any jazz group. Mm. All of those songs have their own fake book. Mm. You got a mm -hmm. uh, you got a head. Mm -hmm. You got a bridge. Uh huh. And everybody in the band would just play something. You know, it wasn't the same bass line every night. It wasn't the same guitar chink. It wasn't the same keyboard. Really? But you all respected whatever you played sections uh -huh. of songs. You didn't play parts. Mm -hmm. And so one don't need to rehearse. All you had to know was, you know, how long this section is, where the bridge is, what key it's in, and we go. And on. one, two, three, four, we're off and running. <laughs> and you know, Maceo would do little spurts and stuff uh, lyrically, you know, a few grunts and shouts and uh -huh. phrases and whatever. Uh -huh. And that would be it. You know, you get they say, shake everything you got. Shake everything you got. Yeah. It <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to learn that. Yeah, you yeah. know, shake everything you got with a hook, and then you come back with a verse. You know, yeah. everybody, I want y'all to do. Ha. And then, yeah, yeah. none of that. He just said, shake everything you got. Then yeah. you go to the bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so was it fun? It was. It was it, fun. It was fun. It really? But you know, I'm in. This is 22 years now. Yeah, I'm wow. in a band a long time. Yeah, you know. If it ain't fun, I gotta make it look like it's fun. Yeah. So you know, people say all the time, "Man, you look like you having fun up there." I say, "You don't know." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, so what kind of cat is a uh, Macy? What kind of cat is he? Country cat or just yeah, he, off the off the stage and off that? He, you know, he, like he that. just a mellow, chilled out, cool dude. Really? Yeah. Wow. And it's like he knows he's Macy. -o. He, I mean, he know he's not just a saxophone player. He's an icon. Wow. Nobody plays like that. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 there's some people that might play at it. Yeah. But I think out of respect for what he does, people just generally just say, no, nah, man, you do that on yeah, your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you thing. ain't going to find that percussive, Yeah. that funky, a saxophone player. Yeah. He could stop the band and play by himself, and, and people still be dancing. Yeah, yeah. Somebody told me, man, he did that, man, for like 10 minutes or something, man. And, 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 and that... Tell them, he he did this thing where he played one note, and for like about uh, four bars, eight bars, then he went up a half step, wow. and people were just losing their mind because wow. you know yeah they t yeah they don't know what's happening, but every time you go up a half step, the intensity increases yeah yeah, yeah. And, and people just think well, something Some, happened yeah something they can't say what yeah, it is yeah yeah but he took advantage of the little things. In music, yeah, the nuances and, and, and the all, the, yeah, all the little idiosyncrasies and stuff. Yeah. He was just milked that <laughs> like a cow, and 
And you've 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 performed on his, some of his records too. Yeah. Yeah. Did you arrange some of any? Oh of yeah, I had fun on his records. So you, you know, got to do some really do some arrangements. He on. said, "Don't just play on it. You know, pull the pin out." Wow. So yeah, man, I had fun writing them parts for Mason. So what? Man. Well, how does that feel, man? Hearing your rank, like on. I mean, when you listen to say, I did that. Does oh, yeah. that is that a good feeling? It, it is, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it is. I, I I think more than anything is when somebody just says, you know, they just give you a blank check and say, just write what you feel. Wow. And for somebody to trust you enough to give you that. Yeah. And then you come up there and you bang it out the park. Yeah. It's yeah. a good feeling. Yeah. You know, it, it it is a good feeling and. It's not one of those things where, man, you know, I wish I had done it. And there was some instances of that. Where, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I might have been a little bit lazy about writing. I might do the <laughs> first chorus, and uh-huh. then I say in the second chorus, and do the same thing again, which I don't do as much now. I'm, 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 as I've gotten older, I've mm-hmm. learned that you can put a little bit more work into this. Yeah. But it felt so good the first time. I'm like, why not do it again? <laughs> and so yeah, I got a. Um, he let me just go off on it. Right? And, and how many it. years with Maceo? Like playing? Uh, Twenty-two years. Wow. I started playing with him in '98. Wow. And I've been playing with him That's since. It. Wow. Yeah. And what? And what are uh, some lessons that you learned from playing with Maceo? Like what? Are, what are some takeaways in terms of? Uh, I know you know you pick every group you can learn something from this and, and learn from that. We, 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 if you had if someone asked you, what's we, we, some takeaways you learned from playing with Macy? Well, I've learned his version of Kiss, which is keep it simple, stupid. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. His version of it is, I don't know if it's like a blade or a brick. Mm-hmm. But either way, it's coming at you hard, and it's yeah. coming at you with purpose. Gotcha. Sometimes it just cuts right through you, and sometimes it's like a bang on the side of the head. Wow. But if you keep it simple, and everybody is on the same page, it has the same effect as listening to Basie, gotcha. which everybody is, you know, you know anything about big band, that's like the industry standard for tight. Yes, sir. No I mean, yeah. you don't get tighter than the basic yeah, yeah, band. Exactly. They, it, it's like one person is doing everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, is and, and that's the thing. Even something as simple as this, <laughs> I felt stupid doing that on stage. Right? Uh-huh. It's like, man. Uh, uh. Then I saw a visual of it. I was like, man, that look good when that band's all doing yeah, it. Yeah. Then you go see an old video of James Brown, and they doing the yeah, same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. He brought it from James, mm-hmm. and then, you know, I'm taking in the... Because, you know, even if you see the horn section now. Yeah. Now, now Brad, Elijah, and myself, you know, we go by... Well, it's... I, I it, the step. company is, is, is Beltway Horns. Okay. You know, in other words, three players or four players, however you want. Mm-hmm. Arrangements are in-house. Mm-hmm. And if you're anywhere on the East Coast... You ain't got to fly us in. You gotcha. know, we go home. We don't go to hotels. Yeah. That's yeah. an expense you ain't got to pay. Uh-huh. You ain't got to fly us nowhere. Uh-huh. You know, we'll drive up. And you get all of the advantages of having a horn section without the headache of the, and the expense yeah. of yeah. having them on the road. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But you only get that right around here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and I think the, the, the one example of that was when we did um, a hit with Eric Benet. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was going out on these cruises. How was that? It was great, man. Wow. Because he pretty much the same thing, man. His MD was like, just write what you like. Wow. And Eric, you know, everybody thinks he's a singer, singer, singer. First of all, I think, I really believe he's got perfect pitch. Mm, wow. And I know he is, you know, an upper-level musician, too. Wow. Because yeah. he'll sing stuff, and then he'll sing... You know, he'll get to a four, uh-huh. and then he might, instead of doing four, he might do a sharp 11 just wow. to mess with you. Wow. So, just yeah. Just to add a little bit when, of when people hit that sharp, to it. When people hit that sharp 11, you say, okay, they know. They know, yeah. Yeah, they know something. Yeah. 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 They, they've been in the game yeah. a little longer than most. Yeah. And, and, and good dude, man. Yeah. Good dude. And we played with him, and the same thing it was like we did uh, D.C., Baltimore, uh, New York. 
and, and Philly, you know, do the yeah, yeah. stuff. So it's a self-contained horn section. Beautiful. Yeah. But that horn section, you know, there's a couple of steps that we do when we live, man. Yeah. You know, it's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it looks good. It's yeah. a simple step. Yeah. But the fact that we're all together doing it, yeah. it just comes off yeah. visually great. And, and, and that's then, one of the things I learned about Maceo, man. It's wow. like, you know, just keep it simple. Yeah. And as long It'll, as everybody's together. It's all good. Yeah. And, and, and the other thing, too, is, you know, just... Yes, sir. Come, you know, <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. Match your thing, man. You just come in the <laughs> nice suit. Don't look like you. And you know that was one of the things that he said. He says, "You, know, I don't want you to respect the stage enough to not look like you just crawled out from under the car, just came from down the street playing then, ball, and then jumped do, up do, here." Do you think that's a jazz sensibility? Because I know jazz cats. That's you know, you know, they used to dress, they used to dress up, man. and yeah. they, and it's, it was thing about respecting the bandstand. Now ca the young cats, the hip hop generation, they went, they got Timberlands on it, <laughs> they had on <old> back. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I will say, Roy Hargrove was yeah. the bridge between the old and the new yeah. as far as yeah. presentations. Yeah, because he would show up, man, hand tied bow ties, yeah, yeah. Uh, Euro cut suit, and then stick. he had some J's on. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was a trendsetter with that. He was, man. Yeah. He and and he was like, you know, and it wasn't like, you know, the criminal element looking yeah, at hip hop. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, the dude yeah. came. He was always, yeah. man. He came correct. Yeah. Well, and you know, and everybody had one. Of, they have a one thing. I, uh, Fred Irby used to say at, uh, at Howard. Yeah. He said people hear with their eyes. <laughs> He used to tell us that. So what, your visual presentation can sometimes uh, is just as important as the, the oral presentation. Yeah. So Now, so, Fred Irby, you know, that brings me to an interesting question. <laughs> and, you know, some people will say stuff like, you know, what would you rather have? Um, 10 million at 40 years old or to go back to 10 years old with all the knowledge you have now? Tim... Tim, uh, you, how much? How, ten million at forty? Yeah. Give me ten million at forty. You know why? Cause knowledge don't always translate to money. <laughs> but you know what? Knowledge translates to a better life. That's true. That's true. And yeah, cause, I, I but feel at, like if I had gone back, but at forty, I wouldn't have gone to school where I did. I would have gone under the tutelage of maybe a Fred Irby, a Calvin Jones, a. Uh, 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 God, what's Show his name? me the money. No, a, a, a rep stone. Yeah, I got you. you know. Yeah. Well, you, you know, know um, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. But show me the money. I I would I can understand. What you, by forty, they say forty is the youth of old age. Mm -hmm. By forty, you done figured it out to know how to make that ten million. You know, if you're younger, you might wait, blow it, and all that. Yeah. But by forty, you done figured out something. And whatever you didn't get, you you can. You get what you get it from forty on, and this is another reason why I'll say that forty is is uh, you know the, the the chunk of money at forty is a good thing uh -huh. because there were some things that I did, some things I did, some mistakes that I made mm -hmm. that have gotten me to where I am now. Mm -hmm. That if I went back and I was smarter about certain things, you know, maybe I wouldn't have the kids I have now. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I wouldn't have the wife I have now. Yeah, I would have yeah, gone yeah. another direction. And I wouldn't trade any of that for anything. I mean, then you got to say, man, sometimes, you know, I know ideally we want to live the perfect life, but sometimes it's those, and I was talking to my boy Munir about this, man, sometimes it's those experiences that are heartbreaking that just, you, and you, or you, you know, you run into these brick walls. Those be the best experiences. And, you know, because it adds, you can't get that at no school, man. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. You know, and we're gonna go into Prince, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a story about Prince. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because <laughs> because <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, since I'm there, I might as well tell it now. Yeah. You know, we I was so nervous playing with Prince. See, I'm a, I was a jazz cat thinking I want oh yeah I could you know yeah and, you know so and then and I got there man and I saw the level. Of not only production and all that, yeah. but his level, his musicianship. I said, "Whoa!" It was very intimate, and and oh, that, it was like that's, walking. That's on, some big boy shit. It, it was going yeah. Up it was like there. walking on eggshells. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we rehearsed. 
and you know, and I'm trying to learn his music and all this, and he points to me. <laughs> so <laughs> man, I start playing in another key. <laughs> And I, was, and I remember that week, I was like, man, Tone got to cool down, man. Yeah. And it was like, we were trying to do what we were doing. Yeah. And you were like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, I went back to the park, to the hotel and cried, man. I was like, so embarrassed. <laughs> I was, but, and I ain't tell nobody until he passed, because I was, but, but those are, when you grow up and you look, at, those are the moments that, and you get beyond it. Yeah. Those are learning. It's just learning experiences. It, you know, you learn and you and you say, okay, it's how you get up. You mm -hmm. know, you let it beat you down. You're gonna get knocked down. Yeah. So you you say, okay, yeah. I took one on the jaw. Here, I'm still here. Yeah. You did, and it's your staying power. And that's what people, y'all young people, you gotta learn. You're gonna get knocked down. It's your staying power. Yes, it is. And it's and your character, and it's how you get up. I made mistakes. your characters would get you back up. Exactly. Yeah. And so, man. I, I had to get that story out the way. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but but that was a funny thing, man. Because Prince was he was getting the best everybody. Man. Yeah, he's getting all these, you know, like Candy Dolfer. Yeah, and, and Maceo, Najee was in. Yeah, Eric Leeds, Mike Phillips. Yeah, yeah, played there. Lee Hogan's man. We had all of these horn players coming through, but they were all like, you know, leaders of their own thing. Yeah. And I tried to explain to him. I said, man, you're getting a whole bunch of front people, but yeah. you ain't getting a section. Yeah. Uh, you know, people that are committed to the common good. Yeah. You know, ain't, they'll only step out when you ask them. But yeah. the sole focus yeah. is, excuse me, yeah. collectively, uh -huh. pull this thing off. Yeah. And he let me pick five people. Yeah. And I called you. Oh, man, thank you. And, and I'm going to tell you, man, I appreciate you for that. Because oh, who, who else can say, yeah, I rehearsed with Prince. And Prince could hear in, he could he he could hear like okay no that note I mean he he had, I was just amazed I was just like but you know what he is he doesn't know Jack well I don't say he doesn't know Jack but he doesn't know about horns really he doesn't understand why one horn is in B flat and another one's in E flat okay and how a trombone is in B flat but I read bass clef and C okay you know all that stuff but is he totally knows if it don't sound right he know what he want to hear yeah yeah but you know mechanically and, yeah, and yeah. sonically he's yeah. like oh, I don't know so yeah, man, he's was, like I trust you with that yeah that that was a heck of experience but, but that was the thing cuz Maceo when we got in the band uh -huh. Maceo would say cuz he wanted Maceo uh huh so how you how I'm yeah. gonna ask you how'd you, yeah. how'd you he he was doing a session somewhere and he's like gotta have Maceo you know you know he said play this like Maceo, and he was getting all these people that couldn't because uh -huh. like I said earlier uh -huh. you don't play like Maceo you just sit back and watch it happen yeah 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 and he the light bulb went off in his head he said well dad why don't I just go get Maceo mm -hmm. came to the show he saw the chemistry that we had. Mm -hmm. And it was like I want you to join my band and bring that trombone player with you. <laughs> wow. Because he didn't want to break it up. Oh wow. And and Maceo got there was like I was like okay. You know. I now, him, now were you Maceo said, and he got the pen. He oh, got the wow. script. So I ended up having to chart all of that stuff out because people were leaving and other ones were coming in. Oh wow. And just to keep everything consistent, there's this book of horn charts. Wow. So you so you found your niche. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now, did you? You know, I always wanted. I, I I'm not at my best when I'm uncomfortable. Like uh, none of us are. Yeah. And yeah. I always wanted to like Billy really sit down and just just to talk to Prince and just like a real not like oh you're Prince, mm -hmm. but just to be like, because he's one of those guys that reminds he has to really get to know you. Right. You know, and, uh, and he, he's he's got his game face on all the time. Yeah. And, and rare is the time where his guard is down and yeah. he's just a regular person. Yeah, yeah. But I, he's like, I could tell he had a good heart. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I could I could tell. You know, I, he was. You know, I remember man when we was in rehearsal. <laughs> At the time I had this beat up six Mark six. Mm -hmm. I had rubber bands on, <laughs> and he just looked at my whole. <laughs> and I said, I, he didn't have to say nothing. So that. From that, for we got paid for that week. Mm -hmm. I went and got this black horn. Mm -hmm. I said, man, I'm gonna be pretty from that. Yeah, so, so. No, I, he he likes things shiny and yeah, pretty. Yeah, yeah. And so I didn't know. See, as a jazz cat, mm -hmm. we always about the the old rusty. Everybody yeah, like yeah, a yeah, horn yeah, with yeah, no yeah, black yeah, on, yeah. on it, man. And, then, and so I learned. Now those horns are generally brighter, the, or they darker, which the, with no lacquer. 
No, they're a little bit on the dark side. Well, more. That's I, more. I, I, I gotta think. You know, it's more dark. It's more a darker. darker because side. without all of that lacquer, yeah. it's a song for metal. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's not going to vibrate yeah. as much. Yeah. You know, but I didn't. I never got into the vision. You see, I'm, I'm looking sharp, man. This yeah. was the reason. No, you don't look like a teacher. You look yeah. like the principal. <laughs> No, man, but you know, I learned that. Yeah, like, you act up, you want to see you down at the Principal Parker office and see how, you know, yeah, yeah. how bad you want to beat in. So you learn, <laughs> so you learn those things, man. That uh, it's your presentation, not it ain't just the music, it's all that. And it, and, and I had that's another thing I got yeah. from him. It was yeah. presentation again. I yeah. learned presentation and music simplicity uh -huh. from a lot of people, but yeah. it was different versions of it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, like Prince, man, his his thing wasn't the suits and ties until he saw Maceo. Wow. It's like, oh, okay. And I noticed Prince was always in costume. Yeah. And uh I mean he had his had his heels on and I mean And sometimes he changed a couple times a day. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. And you know what I know uh, you know, because when we rehearsed at his Paisley mm -hmm. studios, right? And you go in there and I, I think the, the, the motorcycle from Purple Rain mm -hmm. was on the left or something. And I mean, that big area where we played and people came in and were dancing while we were rehearsing. And yeah. I, it was just, and then at night, he cuts all the lights off and he lights the, the whole building up with candles. Yeah. And I really, it occurred to me that he actually believes he's a prince. It was almost like being in a palace. And it's and the color purple. Mm -hmm. You know, so he so I'm putting all this together. I'm saying he this is he's a prince. Yeah. And 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 so that's and I said, man, but that was. No, a, I think he, he he's bigger than the prince. He he's like, he, well, he, yeah, he, I'm the quarterback. Yeah, he, yeah. The prince is the running yeah, back. Yeah. <laughs> he the he quarterback. The he, he the king. But he, he called himself. He called himself Prince. No, that's his actual name. Prince Rogers Nelson. He was named Prince. He's his name Prince. Yeah. I didn't know that. I yeah, that was his, his dad, man. His. Wow. Yeah. Oh wow! I didn't know that. His name is Prince. That's wow. that's one. That's his gummit name. Wow! I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, you learn something every day, man. Yeah, but, man. But uh, yeah, but that was a beautiful. So, how what was that experience like? Um, playing with and how long did you play with Prince? Played with Prince seven years. Seven years. Yeah, it was, it was like being in the fire department. Did you make good money? Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you told me about a t a t what was that tour you did when y'all had the pictures? Um. Was that the new generation? Did you play new, with the new, new Power Generation? New Power Generation. Yeah. And now, did he, a tour? he had different factions of that. The, uh -huh. the original MPG was, I think, like early 90s. Okay. You know. But you told me about a tour, man, that y'all did. And I remember, because there was a book of pictures from, mm -hmm. that, from that tour. Yeah. You remember what tour that was? Was that the... Uh... That was... It was a couple of them. Yeah. He had books for... A lot of those. Now we did the the twenty one nights in London. Yeah. And there's a big about inch thick and it's a hardback and it's all photos. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think I saw it. Yeah. 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 That's crazy, man. And uh did you record you record with Prince? Mm hmm I did. And what the funny thing was is we would do like maybe one song an album. <laughs> Y'all do over oh, the yeah. band? Okay. Yeah. But the one thing I remember more than anything was when we did uh, Get on the Boat. It's like he hung a mic from the ceiling, uh -huh. count to four, and just the band played. <clears throat> now, Cora uh, Coleman. Coleman was in the band then. Uh -huh. And holy, she mashed the nonsense out of that. Yeah. And we just did the song for all intents and, and purposes you know, live. She was, she's, a, she's a Howard grad. Howard, yeah. But yeah. And I met her at, at uh, yeah. Howard Big Band rehearsal. Hey, man. It, and I'm ne next day I'm seeing her on the the, the, the uh, NFL uh, the, 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 the uh, Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. I yeah. said, "Wow, man!" Now, I got to tell you, the Super Bowl was funny because uh -huh. he wanted to do this thing. He flew us down there for the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Now, unbeknownst to me, he don't want the horn section. He wants the Florida A and M band to play our horn parts <laughs> for the for wow. the parade effect. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So. Now, now, if you remember anything about the Super Bowl, it rained like the Dickens. Because it okay. was outdoors yeah. in Miami, mm -hmm. and it was in February, and it rained. So he's out there playing Purple Rain, and rain is falling down all over the place. Wow. One of the best performances, halftime performances ever. Yeah, wow. Because everything was natural. Yeah. Real instruments, nothing recorded, 
outdoors, yeah. rain, and, it's, that's, that's and really he killed it. Yeah. In the meantime, me and my wife sitting up in the hotel, <laughs> dry and warm, <laughs> watching the whole thing on TV. <laughs> And, and sipping whatever and strawberries and stuff. Yeah, hey, you said it looks good, doesn't it? So yeah. You so know. did you have you ever have any real like one on one like talks with yeah. Prince? Sure, I have. What kind of cat was he? Like like beyond all the the the, the lights, camera, actions. Yeah. What kind of cat was he's, he? He's just a real chill dude, man. He is a prankster beyond imagination. Now, now I, I got to tell you a little bit about this. Now, my wife, you know, she was. Adopted by Rick James, so wow. her reward for getting straight A's was that she would go out on a tour in the summer, and she would have his bus, and he would fly everywhere. Wow! So you know, and, and of course, everybody else in the band is like, "Spoil little red man." But that was what she got for getting straight A's. Wow! Now, at the same time, Prince is opening up for Rick. Wow. This was back in his station wagon days. Wow. So she knew Prince way back then. She's like, all these other people just want to make sure I don't get in trouble. They're fun. <laughs> They're my age. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she knew Prince way back then. And, wow. you know, the whole thing of, She knew him personally? She knew him personally. Wow. So, you know, that goes on. The fast forward. And y'all just have us together years wow, later. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> So she knows stuff about him that I didn't. So I hear all the stories about how they would go to a club and it would be so dark. And if they got separated or lost, the sign for, okay, I'm over here was, oh! <laughs> That's where that came from. What really? It was it was their there was their call in the club to let one know where the other one was at. Wow. Yeah. That is crazy, man. That's what I'm saying. I think, I believe, man, in life. Things are already designed, man. We just follow it, going through the motions, man. Cause yeah. How could that? So back to what you were asking me a minute ago, she sees him now, mm -hmm. and she's like, "What happened to him?" I said, "Baby, he got famous." <laughs> oh, this is this 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 is later when he became prince. Yeah. Uh -huh. Way. I mean, this is maybe two thousand two, two thousand three. Uh huh. When she finally sees him again, after not seeing him for years and years. And she's like, what happened to him? I said, he got famous. I see he real big now. He can't be that guy anymore. Fame is is funny that way. Yeah. yeah. You might be the same, but everybody around you changes. Change. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, but the thing about Prince was he came to see me on stage before I ever went to see him. Because P-Funk is playing at the Beverly Theater in 83. Uh-huh. Uh now, that might be the supreme Live P Funk record, P Funk All Stars, live at Beverly. And Theater. he came to that. He came to that show. Matter of fact, the, on a horn riser, there's a curtain. You know how they had those curtains in the yeah. one, one, mm -hmm. one in the back. He was behind one right there, maybe about from here to that corner over there. So he's checking us out the whole time. Wow. And then I walked off stage. I like, I know who he is. I say, Hey, what's going on, man? He said, Hey, how you doing? You know, he didn't make a big fuss about it because you know he had. Enigma, then. Yeah. And so I see him years later, and you know we remembered that. Wow. And he see you with your wife. Mm hmm. And did they? Hey, was it, was that just a coincidence? It it, it might have been a coincidence to him. Really? Because I knew her for like almost twenty years before I even asked her out. Oh wow. <laughs> she Man. was just. You know, Donna, they used to roll cables and and, and work with the crew uh -huh. and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, and, she, she, and he's just like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy, man. So what, Prince, um, to tell just something about his his musicianship and, I mean, his love for music. Like, he, li he lived, breathed music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, he can't go to sleep because of music. Yeah, I, I heard you saying something about, man, you don't, you wonder if you ever, because y'all would do a gig and stay up all, then you, all, all night, then he'll call and say rehearsal. And, <laughs> yeah, he, he would do that. We would do a, we would do a sound check, sound check rehearsal, two to four. Uh-huh. Eat. Do the concert at eight. And then, you know, 10, 11, it's over. You know, 
go play an after party in the same place, mm -hmm. you know, or you know, go back to the hotel and chill. And then you get a call, uh -huh. be downstairs in an hour, dressed and ready to go. We playing an after party somewhere. It went on all day, yeah. and I've been out as late as sun was up by the time I got back to the hotel. Uh -huh. And then he'd show up the next day at rehearsal like he ain't never been to sleep. <laughs> and the thing was, he wouldn't just walk in. It's like he just morphed out of the floor. Now, would that drug some of the musicians? I remember seeing the piano player, and they were like, and what's the drummer that was when we did? Uh, John he Blackwell. Passed. Yeah, John. And, you, and they just, and, and, and um, so it's like, you have to have a lot of stamina. Yeah. To, 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 that to job was that job was twenty four seven. That's yeah. why I say it was like the fire department. Yeah, because you know the bell would ring and you had to go slide down the pole. <laughs> he said it was like with, the fire department. <laughs> yeah, you had to get up and yeah. just shoop, yeah, and be in the truck and ready to go put a fire out, man. Yes. But only That's, we had horns instead of you know yeah. water hoses yeah. and and fire retardant. And he paid you for that. He paid you well for that. Yeah, man. yeah. So that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. How'd yeah. you feel about his passing? Were you shocked? Did it hit you off guard? It did. It did. Yeah, cause uh, that I was I was teaching this, and it's, somebody said Prince. You know, it kind of was like when Michael Jackson passed. It was just like what? I mean, it, it was like really. What? I mean, you know. Yeah. No, I remember where I was at the passport office. Really? Yeah, I was uh, taking um, somebody to get some paperwork done, and I was, and my nephew hit me up, and he says. Did you hear? I said, no. And he says, it, first of all, I want to know if you heard it first. Did Prince pass? I was like, no, I didn't hear. Wow. And then the way they announced it on the radio let me know it was. Yeah. But, you know, he had been in a lot of pain. Yeah, because yeah. I remember he, was, he had to get hip. Did he ever get that hip placement surgery? I don't know if he ever did or not. Yeah, because I know I know he was limping when we did the Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. But but he was I mean, for somebody who was so anti drug or whatever, yeah. you know, it was, it was vegan lifestyle yeah. and all of that. Yeah, it was some, some funny stuff you around know, that. Yeah. For you to be going down the road where you getting, you know, off the street yeah. painkillers and stuff like that, you are hurting. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I, 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 I'm hearing something. Y'all, y'all months apart. Y'all born months apart. He was born in June. I was born in September. Same year. Wow. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's, that's so. You know that whole thing of ah, oh, it's Prince. Oh, it's Prince. I said, you know, that's that's just you know, that's Prince down the street from the project. Because <laughs> you know he was. We came up in the same era. It, it wasn't like all of this stuff that he knew. I had to learn. Yeah. You, I was like, no, I knew the same thing. Well, yeah, wow. So, you know, we were pretty much on the same page. Wow. So just real quick, I got a few more questions. Mm -hmm. Who's somebody to catch you? I mean, I, I just, we just, we, ain't, we don't have enough time to go on catch. Who's yeah. some of the other cats you, you know, played with, man? Um, let me see, the late George Duke. George Duke. Yep. Yeah. Stanley Clark. Now, I was doing these jazz cruises. Uh -huh. And what happens then is a lot of people will come on the boat, uh -huh. and they would bring a band, but they would just have the house band and okay. all this stuff. So I got, you know, affiliated with a lot of those different people oh, okay. through that. And Eric Benet, Benet, Eric Benet, Stanley Clark. Wow. No, Stanley Clark. Dave. Hmm? Dave Murray. Dave, yeah. Wow. And David Sanborn, wow. Robin Ford. Uh, That's uh, why I asked you, what is it like? To be Greg Boyer, because <laughs> that, I said, man, this cat done played with all these beautiful, wonderful people, man. It, yeah. it, 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 you know. Um, oh, you know. And then there's Boosie, and then there's Sheila E. You know? Yeah. Oh my God. See, we could, we, we, man, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Beautiful. It's, man. it's, a, it's a lot of folks. You've man, been blessed. But, would you say? I, I, I would say so. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. It, it's, it's okay. You have favor, and they okay. say favor ain't fair. <laughs> Couple more questions, man. Yeah. What is pocket jazz? Pocket jazz. Is, did you is, coin the term? By the yes. Way? Okay. Yes, well, I did. Tell the people what pocket jazz. is Pocket jazz is, you know, everybody. Well, first off, you from DC and you say pocket uh -huh. slash socket. You know, <laughs> uh -huh. it's that thing. Yeah. So that's a that's a that's a that's a term you you coined. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
And you you have a group with uh, Pelot uh, the Pel Peloton. Peloton. Yeah. Now, now first of all, Pocket Jazz is you know, it's nice to have people dancing. Uh huh. And a lot of go go bands, you know where the term Pocket comes mm -hmm. from. Well, what it means in D.C. anyway, mm -hmm. it's always meant something. Mm -hmm. You know, they tend to cover, you know, recent R.I.B. and stuff. I said, what if I did that and I covered jazz tunes? What if I did some mm. Weather Report? Wow. You know, what if I did some Kenny Garrett? Mm -hmm. And what if I did some other stuff and then put that thing on it? Wow. That's what pocket jazz is. Wow. It's jazz with a pocket. Wow. I love <laughs> it's it. It's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, I love it. And, and I've had, I started that in 2009. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Under the band uh, Peloton. Now, the band Peloton is a different outfit. Oh, that's different. What, what, what Peloton do? The Peloton is, you know, pretty much a blue note kind okay. of setup. Okay. But instead of doing the same old standards, you know, do some um, some Blondie, some Funkadelic, some okay. Steely Dan, okay. <laughs> some Foreigner. Wow. You know, do all of these, you know, R&B and classic rock tunes in a jazz format. So wow. it was like the polar opposite of pocket jazz. Wow. That's, man, That's you might have started a whole new movement with this pocket jazz, bro. Because the, the thing of it is, man, is if you're going to hear the same old songs, do something different with them. No doubt. <laughs> and, you know, it, it is not just kids. Grown folks like to hear some music too, yeah, man. Yeah, but no at doubt. the same time, you know, it gives them a chance to be able to get out there and, Kick off their shoes, Patty Bell style, and, and, and get their groove on. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 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 have have you recorded as a leader? Have you have you done any recording? I have. You know, the funny thing is, as a matter of fact, right here, I've recorded different stuff, uh -huh. but I haven't finished it. Oh, we got to get that stuff finished, my brother. I, I know, but you know what? What happens is every time I do something. I, I want to go off in another direction. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. See, that's like them cats that play all them horns. Ah, I want to play this one. I want to play that. <laughs> I, I, I beat myself up daily for not having focus on that. But let me encourage but, you. To... And, and it's and it's my own chameleon tendencies are at yeah. fault. Yeah. Well, let me encourage you to continue to do your own like them recordings that you started. Yeah. Because I to me, man, I'm telling you, you know. We lost Andrew White a few weeks ago, man, and, and man, when you leave, that's all. Whatever you leave behind, that's it. That's it, yeah. So you know, that's why I do. I'm just trying to do everything I can to say that I was here for the sake of legacy. Yeah, legacy, and and to say, yeah, I, I didn't just come through this planet, and and, and yeah. it, you know, I left something behind that, that can help. You know, I'm, I mean, I would have never been able to experience Charlie Parker if it wasn't for the recordings. And that's why I think it's important to document yourself. Yeah, and, and and that's the thing too. I mean, there's documentation out there. Yeah, it just doesn't have my name on it. Yeah, but I want like your like, stuff because you might have like with your pocket jazz. It might be something that that's like, oh, that's that's pocket jazz. Mm -hmm. You know, like we, we say cool jazz. We think of Miles Davis. You know, yeah. bebop. You know, pocket yeah. jazz. Great boy. <laughs> so I'm just encourage you to uh, complete all that stuff, man. It's very yeah. important. Um, um, for legacy purposes, mm -hmm. um, and man, that's sometimes when you do a recording, that's, that's your representation of who you are. Yeah, you know. So, I got a couple more questions. The first question is, yeah. what advice would you give young musicians, up and coming musicians, in terms of, and you know, once we get through this pandemic and. A life in me, if it, you know, hopefully it gets back to normal, whatever. Yeah. But just in general, or, I also want to ask you. Them, there might be a new normal, man. We yeah, don't know. Yeah. But what, 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 and specifically, because I always saw, saw you as a leader. Yeah. Did you develop those leadership skills or were they normal? I mean, were they natural? Or? I, I think the, it, it, it sort of fell on me. Okay. Because of the experience and the track record, you know. Yeah. Gotcha. You know, when somebody's like, I don't know what to do here, uh -huh. a lot of times I'm the one in the room that has been there. I gotcha, I gotcha. You know? Yeah, but you, you do a, a, a damn good job. I'm <laughs> tell Thank you. you. But what Thank advice you. would you give young up-and-coming musician? Um, the same thing I said earlier in part one. Mm -hmm. Keep your gun loaded and your sword <laughs> sharp. Love it, love it. <laughs> 
All right. Because you don't ever know when the fight's going to begin. And that's a me in a sort of way saying, be ready, don't get ready. Gotcha. Because when these opportunities come along, you know, when somebody says, I need so-and-so, more often than not, they're going to say now. They're not going to say in a year when you get better. Yeah. And they're saying, it says, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Yeah, stay ready so you don't have yeah, to get yeah, ready. Yes. Keep your your sword sharp and your gun loaded. I love it. <laughs> how can the people, you can look at the mic and tell how the people, if they want to get in contact with you, either you need arrangements, you need uh, you need some somebody to play some bone yeah. or whatever. Oh, how I'm, can I'm all over social media. I'm you on, have an email? Uh, I'm on or Facebook. Uh, I have an Instagram page, okay. Trump Boyer. And I got a Twitter page, um, Greg Trombone. Okay. G R A E G Trombone spelled out. Okay. And Tromboy is T R O M B O Y E R. And right. yeah, um, all over social media and websites down yeah, for right they, now. Okay. Unfortunately, they, they can find you. Yeah, I ain't yeah, hard so. to find. Yeah. Man, well, I want to thank you, man, for sharing your time and all this information. I mean, we covered we cut a lot of ground. I yeah. think. And man, we you know uh, it's it's been a pleasure to have you. Oh on man, the show, man. again, thank, you. thank and, uh, you for having me on. Yes, sir, appreciate man. that. Oh man, I I had to have you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you this is a conversation in jazz, and we just listened to the great Greg Boyer, and we'll see you next time.